Welcome. In this session on natural deduction, we'll continue to explore conjunctive normal form. Let's take a moment to recall why we are here. Suppose that we're writing computer code, and that computer code has some preconditions. Unless all of those preconditions can be satisfied, the code won't be executed at all. So what we'd like to know is, can those preconditions, which can all be made into logical statements, can those preconditions be satisfied? If they can be satisfied, the code may execute. If it's not satisfiable, the code won't execute at all. And so we can start to understand some formal methods if we can think about how to create something that's satisfiable. What we discovered in previous sessions it is a formula is satisfiable if and only if the negation of that formula does not hold. That, that is, if we look, if we take the negation of that formula and we look at whether it is always true under all models, if there's a model in which that doesn't hold, then that means that our formula is satisfiable. What we've done previously is, in our earlier sessions, is we explored semantic ways of establishing whether or not something holds. And one way was to use the conjunctive normal form. If we could convert a formula into its conjunctive normal form, then it holds semantically if and only if each of those disjuncts is always true. And a disjunct is always true if and only if a literal and the negation of that literal appear in the same disjunct. So if we could get to conjunctive normal form, we could look at this statement, and then this statement would be equivalent to this. What we've done previously is we've used semantic methods. And those semantic methods require a truth table, and the truth table grows exponentially in the number of atoms that use it. However, a syntactic form of that formula may be much, much smaller. And so we'd like to take a look at that. So let's recall an important fact is that a semantic entailment of a formula holds if and only if that formula is a theorem. This is a semantic statement. It says something about the truth table, which is every row of the truth table evaluates to t. This is a syntactic statement. It says that there exists a proof in natural deduction using no premises whatsoever, and that formula is the conclusion. So if we can start looking at the syntactic question of whether or not something is valid, that answers the question of whether or not this, um, it is semantically um, always true. We can address this syntactic question by using a three-pass method. What we can do is we can take any formula stated in natural deductions propositional form and we can convert it into a conjunctive normal form. To do that, we'll need one, in, one extra set. Previously, we had a set of atoms and a set of literals and a set of disjuncts and a set of conjuncts. We need one extra mechanism, and that is we will define the negative normal form, which is sometimes written as NNF, of a formula as it is a formula C in which negation is only of a literal. And we can define that if we want using the same kind of set theory for metalogic that we've used previously. So we'll take this for now 
as something that you can work out yourself. And you can work out a set, you can call it script N, and you can determine the conditions under which a formula is in that set or isn't that set. And, that, and once we have that negative normal form, we will be able to use a three-pass method to take a formula and convert it into its conjunctive normal form. For this session, let's use two new symbols for formulas. We'll pick formulas, we'll pick symbols which are Greek formulas. So let's use as new formula symbols, symbols, we'll use the Greek letter chi or chi, uh, which we used previously when uh, we were looking, for example, at disjunction elimination. And we'll also use the Greek letter eta. And with these symbols, we'll be able to uh, express some of the syntactic changes that we want to make without worrying about whether these were premises or conclusions. Or, and so we'll try to avoid the use of the Greek letters phi and psi when we're taking our passes at creating the conjunctive normal form. What we'll do is, in our three-pass algorithm, we'll have pass one, which is we'll um, get rid of implication. So we'll call that implication-free. And what we'll do is we'll use a semantic equivalence. And these are semantically equivalent, is formula chi implies formula eta is equivalent to negating that antecedent and having a disjunction with the consequent. What, we'll, what this will do is it will take a, a, any formula that we've represented in propositional terms, and it will replace all of those implications by this disjunction. That will now be implication-free. Pass two, pass two is um, the negative normal form. And to make pass two, what we'll do is we'll try to make sure that only a literal is negated. So what we'll do is again, we'll use some, we'll two semantic equivalences. So these are equivalent and uh, these are also, these are sometimes called part of De Morgan's laws. And they are that if we see a disjunction of two formulas, and that is negated, that is semantically equivalent to negating the left disjunct and conjoining that with the negation of the right disjunct. So that's one form of De Morgan's Law. Another is that if we see a conjunction of two formulas that is negated, that is semantically equivalent to the negation of the first one disjoined with the negation of the second. And if we perform this pass again and again and again until the only negations that happen are of literals, then we will have taken our formula and we'll put it into negative normal form. So in negative normal form, there are no implications because we got rid of those in pass one, and the only um, formulas that are negated are, are atoms. So only literals appear as conjuncts and disjuncts. In pass three, what we will do is we will distribute. Our goal to get conjunctive normal form is we want a conjunction of disjunctive clauses, and each of those disjunctive clauses 
is a disjunct, disjunct of literals. We've got it down to literals using these equivalences. Now we have to create the, the normal form. And the problem is what we'll do is we'll say if we have a disjunction that where these are not atoms, or, or rather where they're not literals, what we'll do is we will use these equivalents. And these are semantic equivalences. Suppose that the left disjunct is complex, that is, it's a conjunction. So in that case, equivalent, what we'll do is we'll, we will say that that disjunct is equivalent to, let's say, sorry, that formula is equivalent to a conjunction of, let's say, one part and a second part. And if that is the case, then the disjunction of a complex of the disjunction of a conjunction with another formula is semantically equivalent to saying take the left conjunct and disjoin it with the second and take the right conjunct and disjoin it with eta. And if we do that, what we'll have is we'll be taking the this more we'll be taking a conjunction that is just joined with something and we'll start to push that down into a conjunctive normal form. And that will get us most of the way. So that that is what we'll do if this left disjunct is complex. Similarly, if the right disjunct is complex, we have another equivalent. So if we say that our right disjunct is equivalent to a left conjoined with a right, then that complex disjunction is semantically equivalent to we take this original left and disjoin it with the left conjunct and that is conjoined with our simpler left disjoined with the right. And as we perform these passes again and again and again, what we'll end up with is we'll be taking something that's more complex here and we'll make it into one of these two simpler forms. And so if we perform this pass one, remove all implications, pass two, push all of the negation symbols down onto atoms, and pass three, make it into conjunctive normal form, we'll be performing some syntactic operations on our formula. And those syntactic operations will be much, much shorter than it would be by going through the exponential truth table of using the semantics. So what we've done here is we've used this equivalence is we've, we've observed that if that a semantic statement is equivalent to a syntactic statement. And we can then answer this semantic problem by using a syntactic method. And this syntactic method is as outlined. Now, of course, when we go to implement this, what we'll find is that there are lots and lots of little details. Some parentheses may be introduced that have to be eliminated, and there may be other, uh, other details. However, this is the general idea. And so what we would be able to do is we, if we were given preconditions in our code, 
we could write those preconditions as a propositional formula, and then we could determine whether or not that formula is satisfiable.